Wow. Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome back to the Cult of Vintage. I'm standing in front of the portalettes because I don't, I, you know, aesthetics and that just ain't it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, now look where I'm at. Hey girl. Anyhow, you guys, we are at Big Valley Antiques here in Milroy, Pennsylvania. Uh, we've been here before. This place is amazing, as you can see. It is two floors. I'm probably going to split this up into two parts. One for downstairs, one for upstairs. Um, we're short on time, so we're going to get in here and we're going to make the most of it. Because we still got to go to Goodwill. And the day is getting long. It's Okay, guys, I did something that I swore I would never do, and that was I got a basket right out of the gate, and I jinxed myself. <laughs> this is not a two-part video. This will be a one-part video. Oh, yes, it is very true. Mm-hmm. Ay, ay, ay. I tell ya. I disappointed myself. I was like, I gotta hurry, though. Well, you paid for it, didn't you? So we are checking out downstairs here first, and I will say it's going to be a little bit quicker. I am going to drop a link right where that finger is pointing. Um, it is going to be my previous video uh, where I did. Um, it was much more of a tour to Big Valley Antiques than what this video is. So here we are stopping in this first booth, and the reason, oh yes, all of this beautiful red amberina glass did catch my eye, and there is a little pink depression glass, lots of clear glass. We do have some of the Marigold Carnival over here. I am seeing those, um, I can't tell from here, are they encased or they flash? The white and the blue vases back there. And of course, we have to check out the creepy doll here. Nothing was really saying take me home, um, but I did want to check out the booth because it was very interesting. Now, something that definitely caught my eye was this UV display uh, cabinet here. Everything was lit up beautifully. The prices were very reasonable. And I'm going to be honest with you, I was so pressed for time. This is the thing about cases. Um, I look at this. Look at this beautiful urn down here. I love this. I think it was priced at, can we read it? It was a one. 25 which i thought was extraordinarily reasonable but i was so rushed and i had to walk up front and then get somebody to walk to the back and it was just like no go for me now here you guys we are seeing stringer's antique shop and we were just there um, i'm gonna go ahead and i will drop another link right up here in the corner this is kathy's place um she does have a booth here at the big valley antique malls in milroy pennsylvania so I was like, oh, hey, well, I literally was just there like 30 minutes ago when I was recording this video. So, hey, I found some good stuff at her her antique store. So I'm going to go ahead and check out the booth here. I mean, shoot, why not? Right. And what did catch my eye were these Annalie elves. I do love Annalise, but I only go for the elves. I don't have this fall one, um, but at 35, it just really wasn't where I wanted it to be for my personal collection. So I did sadly leave him behind and I did see of course how can you not be attracted to the shiny brights the shiny brights really are kind of like a twofer because you are of course getting the ornaments but you're also getting uh, the box as a display piece so I was checking these out too because the pink and the silver those the colors are very popular um, in the vintage realm and those I, you can kind of see there in the center they do have little white stars on them but it was a label that I was not familiar with however the shiny brights everybody knows and loves the shiny brights so i did go ahead and i did pick up it was 15 dollars. box is in really good condition i did pick up a multicolored box here up next in the same booth in kathy's booth here were these three art deco ceramic dogs i thought they were absolutely adorable and i loved their little long ears how cute is it? It was $35 for the set of three. It was very reasonable, um, you know, especially for collector. But again, we're looking at it from the eyes of a reseller. If I would collect them, I would have snatched them up at $35. But to resell, I probably would have preferred them to be about 15 and in Kathy's booth, we are picking up this, cer or, yeah, hello, ceramic chalkware poodle. He does have the little 
blue spots on him with a little bit of silver glitter there to the ears. He was very reasonably priced, but again, it was one of those issues where I get worried about people kind of having to pay the shipping cost because chalkware isn't exactly that light. Now, we did see that 75% off. However, it was the items that was directly behind. But what caught my eye was this little jam or condiment jar, very mid-century. Um, he is missing his spoon, and I flipped them over, and it is Haas Gift Shop in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, which is very close to me. So I thought that was cute. And at $8, I really thought that he was well worth it. Um, I love the little black and white. He's an odd little creature, so this little oddity came home with us. Now, the last booth we're going to stop in downstairs. See, I really did jinx myself. I just was not finding a whole lot of stuff downstairs. But I usually find some really good pieces in this booth here. And first up, I did see this Beaver Dam Mustard Pond. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> So he was, in fact, a little mustard jar. Now, the spoon was repaired. He was priced at $16. He is unmarked. There was an original, like, $1.25, maybe wherever they picked it up. Um, but I thought it was well worth the price. So I did decide to go ahead and pick him up. And do we not love how the vendor put how cute on the tag? Can we just appreciate that? <laughs> Up next was another condiment jar. I don't know. I guess we had a thing for condiment jars today. This is a Tagiri, obviously. It is molded in there in 1979, and it is a little pig. It does come with a spoon. The spoon is not original. Um, it is plastic. It would have been ceramic. Um, the face was absolutely adorable, so we did go ahead and decide to pick him up. Also, up next was this orange glass Look at this free form. I loved it. It was, uh, yeah, the bottom, you know, it wasn't polished smooth. It was beautiful. It was priced at $25, um, which is very fair and reasonable, especially for a collector. But it just wasn't a piece that was really speaking to me. We did see this little ceramic. This is a nightlight, a little poodle here, priced at $26. Again, for a collector, I think that is very fair. It's reading very Napco to me, and I say that because of the way that the eyes are done. And that's right, folks. Whenever we see it trashy, we've got to stop and focus on the trash-tastic. I love those shell souvenir pieces, typically from Florida, and I like the fact that that one had a little crocodile because crocodiles live in florida not alligators oh no and yes we do see the whole howard siamese cat salt and pepper shakers now they don't work they, there's no squeak to them um so i actually did find a pair that did still squeak they are priced at 40 dollars, and i hemmed and hawed over these because i've done very well with the whole howard pieces i've not spent 40 dollars on any um on a set or an individual piece, even though, you know, judging by what I've sold things for in the past, there's definitely room for profit on it. However, it was just one of those things where I was very unsure of myself. And I was immediately attracted to this beautiful, now they have it labeled as an inkwell. I don't know that it is, it, it could be, um, but it was very smooth. I like the color of it. I did leave it behind. And we are back focusing on the whole Howard Siamese cat salt and pepper shakers. I ultimately did leave them behind at the $40 price tag because there actually were quite a few that were listed on eBay um, and actually at the $40 price point. So again, very fair for a collector. Um, but again, just where I'm at for reselling, I didn't really feel comfortable for it. Now, they do have this piece labeled as Mr. Toodles, and it is stamped Japan. I don't know if it is an official Mr. Toodles made by Lefton. I have a feeling this might have been a knockoff, um, and because the eyelashes were missing. Now, the last piece we found was this diamond powdery. It is a Rempel figurine at just $3. And I'm going to cut it off here because we're about to head upstairs. All right, so we did do okay downstairs. However, I didn't really get enough footage, truth be told, to make it into one video. Um, so what I am going to do is we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna shop. Hopefully we find a little, little bit more upstairs. Um, here's hoping, guys. 
Okay, guys, so here we are on the second floor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I will drop yet another link right up here in the corner for you guys. Um, and that's going to allow you to, again, see more of a a tour versus a shop with me. I was much more detailed. It was much more slower. Um, and I did split up my initial visit to Big Valley Antiques into two videos because I really did take my time. And of course, I wanted to focus on that beautiful fiberglass shower shower <laughs> what <laughs> on that beautiful fiberglass lampshade <laughs> i don't know where that came from i like to leave my um my foibles and i think it makes a much more enjoyable and interesting experience for everybody <laughs> Now, I did see this amethyst. It, they did have it labeled as a five finger swung vase and a little, I believe that that one, that candy dish there is a Fenton. Um, oh, I forget who this one is by the Amberina Daisy and Button. Uh, and then we do have, again, another Viking piece here. All of these would glow under UV light. And I, of course, did have my flashlight, but I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it, y'all here we do have some Fenton in the amber. Yes, that is Fenton, Michael. That's right. Thumbprint. <laughs> in case you didn't know. Hmm. And I did see this little pixie planter. It was absolutely adorable. It was $10. Um, uh, maybe five. I probably would have picked it up at five dollars and here is another one of the diamond pottery rumple figurines this one was priced at fifteen dollars and i really regret not getting this all of the diamond pottery were based on the rumple squeakers i really should have got that one and this little ceramic dog with the acrylic eyes he has seen some things unfortunately that he can't unsee folks <laughs> And then we walked into, ooh, can you hear it? Can you hear the angels singing into this beautiful booth? I love how it's set up. I am really marveling at it. Wow. Okay, Michael. <laughs> and look, I'm walking right past a sign there. I should have read it. And of course, I had to go right to the swung vases here. We had greens and blues. They were priced anywhere from $20 to $25. And this one in particular was really grabbing my attention. I do believe that this is Viking. And the reason I believe that it is Viking is due to the shade of blue. Um, Viking has a very distinctive color to their blue, uh, as well as the texture or shininess to Viking glass. Viking glass, for whatever reason, to me, seems very shiny. It's very wet looking in its appearance. Now, check out all of this, this mid-century realness, all of that chartreuse with the blue and the greens and the yellows, a little bit of milk glass thrown in there too. Isn't this booth just, I'm really having a hard time with words. Isn't this booth just absolutely beautiful? I love all of the different textures, all of the different colors that are happening. Ooh, I'm, I'm missing. Oh, I'm, oh, that was a Hager. You were back there. And then I saw the sign 20% off entire booth. And I did see these Fenton hobnail swung vases. This one was priced at just $12. And I was like, excuse me with 20% off. And I was like, hold up, wait, this one's priced at 30. Why is this one at 12? And then I saw, oh, as is. And I'm like, but where? And then I'm like, Ooh, there. <laughs> Um, so I did leave that one behind. Again, this one is priced at $30, which again, very fair for a collector. Now it is unmarked. I was checking for the stamp. So because it is, it is a Fenton piece, but it does not have a stamp. So it is pre-1970. And I did find this absolutely adorable little glass. It is um, it, <laughs> Swedish art glass. I did want to pick him up. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is 20% off. So let me go ahead and let me get this swung vase. But first I was like, is this in Poli? I was looking for a sticker by chance if it was on there. And then I picked it up and I had, everything was securely in place. And I was looking for a made in Italy uh, on the bottom. It, it did not, but I, 
it was very Empoli style, but without either one of those, I couldn't say for sure. We're really, st I'm really looking for that Empoli, and we're getting close up right now of this beautiful glass. <laughs> we safely set it back down and I was a little tempted by this little blue pitcher are we going to call it a pitcher should we call it a ewer but I definitely wanted to pick up this beautiful blue viking swung vase so I did a little bit more rooting around because there is a lot going on here. And I'm glad I did because I found this adorable little rubber face elephant. He is a knickerbocker. If you don't know this about me, I absolutely love and adore a good vintage rubber face plush, both Rushton and knickerbocker. I was struggling with the tag, so I thought I'd let you see the, the crocheted smurf there. And he was priced at just $15 and there was 20% off. I freaked out. Oh, yes. I love him. Look at how happy he is. He is dirty, so we're going to clean him up. Then I did see this. Um, I can't say this word. Oh, geez. The, the Epern. Um, it was made to hold vases. It is obviously in the milk glass. I was looking at it and I was like, why is this $15 though? And I was like, is it damaged? And I'm looking at it and I'm like, no. And I'm like, do I really want to ship this? And I was like, Ugh, no, not really. But it's only $15 and there's 20% off. And then I got distracted by this oddity here, this bank. It's the multiple personality bank. I guess it depends on how much money you spent or how much money you've saved. <laughs> He was only $12. Um, I probably should have got him, truth be told. Just the unusualness of him. I mean, that alone is worth the price tag. So I am popping back up here because I did see, again, what I am believing to be a Viking piece of glass. It's that Jolly Rancher, that candy apple green. Look how lovely she is. And she is long. I haven't sold one this long and this slender. So he was very tempted by it. Um, and then I went back to that Epern. And when I picked it up, you could literally hear the glass slide. And that's because it was cracked throughout. All right, guys. So up next I have, if you have followed me for a while, I've picked up another one of these free form uh, pieces of glass. It turns out this is, in fact, Murano glass. It is priced at $39. Um, I kind of was in a little bit of rush because I wanted to see if this piece was still here, and it is. I was so excited. I did find a matching vase um, previously at the Black Swan Antique Mall. Um, however, it was chipped, so I did leave that behind. Um, this one is reversed. So on the free form that I found before, the brown was at the bottom and it ombre up into the blue. Now, you guys, this is Chris's booth, and I did get to meet the vendor Chris today. He was there, um, and he, interestingly enough, had a clear Ellie Smith swung vase, and I was saying about how I was just talking about this, in particular uh, with Marion from Midmod Marion. We were talking about it Sunday night because it's so hard to find the clear glass swung vases. This one was priced at $42, which I thought was extraordinarily reasonable because I was as, as I was explaining to Chris, I was like, you see, I think this is like, it's more valuable because it is clear. We always find the greens and the blues, the yellows, the ambers. When do you find the clear? It's so elegant and sophisticated, but it still has that mid-century look to it. And also in Chris's booth, I was very happy to see that this Murano clamshell was still here. This is double beveled so that you can display the piece either laying down or standing up. And he gave it to me for just $12. I was stoked. So we did get this piece. Now we are about to back up here and kind of take a little panoramic view of Chris's booth because I think he's got some amazing pieces. We've got some great crackle glass. He has amazing lamps. 
ceramic with the original fiberglass, not the shower, but the fiberglass lampshades, as well as some beautiful art. Look at this beautiful globe lampshade. I don't even know what material it's out of, but it was shiny and iridescent, and it had like this glow all on its own without even being lit up. The man has got some good stuff. I think that we can all agree on that. Now, when I was talking to Chris, I actually glanced down to the left and I was like, is that yours? And he was like, yeah. And I said, that used to be my babysitter. Yes. In fact, our families were family friends and this is Alicia Manzetti. And you guys, I know who made this. As a matter of fact, I was in her craft room. I, it, it, it was so ironic. Everything just kind of fell into place this day. I was elated to get this piece. Chris tried to give it to me for free, but I did buy it. Um, it was just, it was kismet, I guess. Um, him being there, him having it, the clear glass. He was literally just watching one of my videos earlier in the day. It was all just, it was meant to be. Um, now we are in, in Chris's friend's booth here, and I did see that beautiful pink and black Shawnee uh, piece. I have found these silver fade bowls before, and I wondered what they were, if they were just like nut dishes. Well, it turns out it is kind of like a little appetizer tray there, and I didn't realize those those silver frayed bowls, silver frayed, I really am struggling today, silver fade bowls would come in kind of like a condiment or an hors d'oeuvre set. Speaking of, look at these great treasure craft pieces. I've seen these before and I there's something about the color richness to these. I love the utilitarian to them. You see the little treasure craft matador there in the back and we did miss in real life that Fenton hobnail stretch pitcher, swung pitcher, pardon me. And look at this little ceramic rhinoceros and these two they're trying to kill each other. <laughs> Yet this rhinoceros, this rhinoceros is just as happy as he can be. Look at him. Have you ever seen a rhinoceros so happy? He's probably like, yeah, because my enemies are about to kill each other. I have it good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Now, we did see this piece down here. Um, I thought it was absolutely amazing. It is like a ceramic paper bag. Almost like you could stick a wine bottle in there, wouldn't it be? I mean, that's Michael, really now. I don't know that that would be safe, but I thought it was very interesting. It was unusual. Um, it did seem like it was a, a, a gift wares piece. So I'm unsure as to the original sculptor. I know there is an original sculptor who does pieces like that, and I can't for the life of me remember their name, but I don't think that it is because I think they had a little bit more of a matte glaze versus that higher gloss glaze. And I couldn't help it. I was obsessed for some reason, and I had to get a close up. Look at his eyes. <laughs> You know what's going on? Na Mother Nature. That's what's happening right there. It was captured in ceramic. Now, I have seen these two ewers before. They are beautiful. They remind, they're very like late 18th, very early 19th century. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Um, they are hand blown. That's what I'm checking there on the bottom. I love the color ombre. I love the enamel. Uh, flowers on them. They're very feminine. They're very dainty, delicate. They were priced as a set, $24 for both. And I thought, oh yes, today is the day that we are getting these. Oh, it was 25, pardon me, for the set. Unfortunately, one of the applied handles, it was damaged here on the tip and it is sharp. I don't like selling broken glass for whatever reason. I've said that before and I'll say it again. I think I don't know. I debated because I was like, well, you could get one for 24 and I, and it would kind of be like, you're getting the other one for free. Do you value it like that? But then I decided no, because I want to sell it as a set. And then I saw these snail salt and pepper shakers. So that made me feel better. And I was like, these are very unusual. And lo and behold, they're actually PY salt and pepper shakers. I didn't know that they did little snail shells. So guys, we are about to wrap it up here. And what I decided to do was just go ahead and give you a little view of everything that we did buy here at Big Villa Antique Mall in 
Milroy, Pennsylvania. I'm very pleased with everything that we got. Obviously, the majority of things came from the upstairs. Like I said, I really spooked myself out when we were downstairs. I was like, uh, <laughs> proof positive. I will never get another basket right off of the bat again. Proof positive right here it is, folks. Video evidence. The jinx is real. The jinx is real. Again, I really do hope that you kind of enjoyed today's video. Please make sure that you do follow those links before if you would like more of a tour. I'm very pleased with everything that we got. It was such a pleasure to be able to meet Chris today, and I am just flabbergasted by the fact that I have one of Alicia's uh, pieces. I used to have one as a child, and it kind of got lost. But you guys, I'll see you outside. Wow, that was amazing. I thought I jinxed myself. I was like, oh, I'm going to get this basket and it's going to be all... And then I got spooked. We were downstairs. I mean, we got to the last place and I was like, okay. And I was like, well, this ain't going to be two videos. Upstairs? What? Oh my gosh, you guys. It was not upstairs epic. It was so good. So fun. I got to meet the vendor, Chris. Um, he's the one that I got the uh, Murano clamshell and the um, paper mache clown that, again, that's crazy. Like, our families are friends and I knew exactly who it was and I've, it's, that was a really good trip. Um, Big Valley Antique Mall and Consignment. Hit it up here in, um, in Milroy. We're in Milroy, Milroy, Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay, on to a Goodwill. And you'll guys see that in the next video. So until then, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.